John. I'm glad you're here. Amen. How many needs do we have in here? Come on. How many people are in here? How many needs? Come on. We all have a need, don't we? Aren't you glad that God answers prayer? Some of us are still waiting for God to answer prayer, but it's going to happen. Amen? God's not a man that he can lie. Whatever he says is going to take place. Amen? Amen? Amen. So I know there's already some answered prayer because I can see it on your face. <coughs> but I want to tell you something this morning. God has revealed to me that during worship this morning, there's going to be prayer events. So pay attention. Oh my God. Amen? Amen? Pay attention. Oh, Pastor, you're supposed to say that. No. God will do what God says He will do in God's kindness. If there's a deliverance, it will happen. If there's a healing, it will happen. If there's a relationship issue, it will be covered. Amen? I believe that. You don't walk through stuff just to go through stuff. Amen? You go through stuff to give you strength and power to continue in the stuff. Amen? Because the enemy will not leave you alone, folks. Amen. But greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You've got more power and authority over the enemy than he ever has over you. Amen? Amen. Believe it today, folks. Believe it, what God has for you, this could be the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end. Does that make sense? Yes. In other words, this could be the day that God answers something that you've been crying out for, and it could be the beginning of something that you're praying for. Amen? So, Father God, we come before you right now, Lord, with open hearts. More than that, open minds. We're not going to worry about what we hear. We're not going to worry about what we've seen this past week. We are going to keep our eyes on you. Your promises are yes and amen. Father, I pray this morning as we step into a time of worship, you will be glorified. And every time we say a praise word, every time we say a note, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, and you will answer prayer this morning. I believe it. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before, before we start worship this morning, I want to pray a general prayer. Can I do that? Father, there are individuals in this room today that have been going through medical issues. They've been going through discomfort. They've been going through things that have them scared or afraid or don't understand what they're going through. But Father, they are walking through it in Jesus. I pray this morning, Lord God, right now, it's already been said that these individuals that are going through extra stuff will receive their healing. And I pray, Lord, right now for those that are going through diverse temptations, they will receive their healing and be delivered from those in worship service, Lord. Thank you. And we know the worship service can last for days if you let it. Amen? Amen. In Jesus' name. The verse in Revelation that talks about the elders and unmarried people. Playing before the Lord, singing holy, 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 holy. Imagine that happening for eternity. Holy, 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 holy. And sometimes we have a problem for a few hours on Sunday. Holy, holy, holy. God's preparing us for that day. Amen. God's preparing us for the day when we can cry out to Him, holy, holy, holy. How many of you feel prepared? How many of you feel like you can stand before the Lord and cry, Holy, 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 <coughs> for all eternity? My human brain says, What? Yeah. 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 You, ever, you ever ask yourself why?
No one, and you might find this hard to believe, but even some believers don't do very good. Why is that? Because there's not a revelation of what you're supposed to do in Christ. Simple. Can I tell you what it is? Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I don't love myself, then how are you going to love your neighbor? Seriously, folks, there's people out there that are still trying to find what it means to be loved by God. Because they don't have an understanding of what it means to be loved by anybody. It's the truth. I grew up not experiencing love one iota. But when the Lord showed me himself through the word, okay, that's what love, you went, you what, you went to the cross. You gave your life up for me. Why? It's because I love you. The world kind of love will not get you in the place of wrongness. Because the world kind of love gives you all the good feelings, the things that make you feel good. When you walk in the love of Christ, it doesn't always feel good. And what I mean by that is this. You will get ridiculed. You will be called names. I have a t-shirt at home that says Jesus please. Tattoo it on your forehead because it's going to happen. You're a Jesus freak. Yeah, you're right, man. I'm a Jesus freak. And you need to be a Jesus freak. Too. Amen. Amen. Repentance brings you to the place of letting things go that you've been held captive to. If you're in the middle of something that you've been through in your life, if you're in the middle of something that's causing you grief or pain and you know it is, First thing you have to do is recognize that it's doing it. And when we go through stuff that's causing us to be um, looking forward to it every day, we need to ask God, God, what do I need to do to get rid of this in my life? I'm telling you something, folks. God is real. God is so real that the very breath you have in you that you put there. God is so real that when the enemy comes along and begins to launch attacks on you, the spirit rolls up in you and says, no, no, that doesn't belong to you, liar. You cute you in Jesus' name. Now hear me when I say this. You don't have to jump up and down, roll around the floor, do backflips and all that stuff. Just say, look, get away from me, devil. You don't belong here. You got more power than he ever has over you or what you give him. Amen? So we need to understand what, what dead works are. We need to understand that we do stuff to get points in heaven without knowing Jesus. It ain't going to work for you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone. No one does good. Not even one. And let me tell you something. Even when you become Christ-like, you're still fresh-like. Right? There ain't a person in this room. I heard that the most ridiculous statement the other day, and I, I, I closed my eyes and said, Lord, fix this guy. The statement was this from behind the pulpit. I don't have to ask forgiveness for sin because Jesus done it already. So when did you become perfect? When did you become perfect? If no one is righteous, then how can you claim you are perfect and don't need forgiveness for sin? Wrong statement. But there are people that will graduate to that because they don't they want to remain in their sin nature. And if you tell them you don't have to ask for forgiveness for nothing, they'll enjoy that. Amen. I mean, I can be a bad guy and still, no, no, it don't work that way. Dead works is what brings us to a place of glorifying God if it's for the wrong reason. Not glorifying God if it's for the wrong reason. 
If the believer is not to hide his good works, but let them be seen to the glory of the Heavenly Father. Don't hide your good works. You all remember, you all remember the story of Mary, Lazarus' sister. She walked in with this big expensive vial of, of foot cream, anointing oil. She poured it all over him. Anointed his feet. One of the disciples says, wait a minute, that's your you're, you're wasting money. We could have sold that and fed all these people. We find out later the same disciple was stealing from the coffers. So of course to someone like that, oh you can't do that. That's too expensive to do. Let me tell you something, folks. There's nothing too expensive for us to do to show God how much we love the gift that He's given us in this time. Amen. Nothing. Judas kind of freaked out. You can't do that. That's too expensive. You can't do that. That, that, that. There's someone needs that more than your Lord and Savior. Wrong, 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 wrong avenue of business. Let's take that expensive anointing oil and let's go sell it and feed all these kind of people. Let's feed them Jesus first. Get them to understand where this is coming from. Let them receive what God has promised them through Christ and then bring them to a place. Right? Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus oftentimes healed before acceptance, didn't he? He oftentimes healed someone before they even accepted who he was. But guess what happened after the healing? Guess what happened after repentance? Jesus was joined by someone else. How many of you remember the, the, the preacher that Peter was preaching on the day after Pentecost? You remember that? 3,000 souls came to the Lord. The next day, 4,000 came to the Lord. Why? It's because Peter was telling them, this is what Jesus says to do. Good works will not be anywhere. We know people across the board that think the more they do, the better off they're going to be when they receive. Jesus says, some will and some won't. Just because you're performing good works doesn't mean you have a free pass to go for it. Amen? Sometimes we get confused by what we see or hear and how we respond. Well, let me tell you, let me give you a little bit of a heads up here. Be careful of what you watch. Be careful of what you hear. And be careful And the preacher or TV program or whatever ain't backed up by this click. Because the enemy wants to bring you to a place not to believe the truth, but to believe a lie. And when you hear words like, the Bible isn't relevant for 2024, what Bible are you reading? Or I'm going to take the first part of Genesis out where it says man and woman, one man, one woman. I'm going to take that part out and throw it away because I don't believe that no more. Or when it comes to the part of the New Testament when your sin is outlined, oh, I don't want to read that no more because I don't want to, I'm not that person. No I want to join up with this group. The Bible is the only truth that we can hang on to. That's it. There are so many things out there that are causing believers to walk away from faith because someone has aligned up with what they think and they'll put more faith and trust in it. I would rather really have Jesus knock me on the side of the head and say, boy, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> And then to have just this nice, easy, next thing you know, you're, how do I get down here? Mm -hmm. 
you were destined for this. Jesus died for sinners. Sinner, sinner, sinner. It's not the death of Christ that he will save. That's why it's important for us to bring the gospel to everyone who has an ear to hear. Sometimes you can ask yourself the question, I don't see God moving the way that I feel he should be moving. Take your ceiling and put it on the curb. Because God's going to do what God's going to do if you let him do it for you. Oh God, I'm scared. No, don't be scared because if I ask you to do something, it's going to happen. And I'm going to give you the power to do it. The only way to do good works is to do them for God's glory after you see Christ. Evil deed, turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Evil deeds. How many of you know people that do evil deeds? Right? Peace. Evil deeds. Chapter 1, verse 20. I'll, I'll do next thing. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him. And through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. I like that. Made peace because of the cross. Made peace because of the cross. And although you were formerly alienated, and hostile in mind, engage in even de evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Paul talking about people that have been doing evil deeds without realizing what he's trying to convince. You're not that person no more. You're not, you're not that person no more. Quit doing those evil deeds. Well, I've been doing good works forever. Why can't I just continue evil deeds? Don't take some good and evil, do different things. Amen. Amen? Quit doing the evil things. Evil deeds are done by the unregenerated natural man. Unregenerated natural man who does evil deeds. How have you known people in your past, in your present, around you that do nothing but evil stuff? It doesn't have to be murder. It doesn't have to be anything like that. But it can be words. It can be looks. It can be things that make men not evil. Right? Evil deeds are done by unregenerated natural men. Tell me in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 14. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually afraid. Your natural man can't understand the things of the Spirit because your natural man is still stuck in the good works and the evil part. Of your plan. Your natural man don't get it. When do you come to an understanding of spiritual things? When the Holy Spirit moves in after your confession of faith and Jesus moves in and takes up residence, something happens. You begin to recognize between the Spirit and between evil and good works. You begin to recognize, well, that's not from, that's not from God. <clears throat> That's not from God. That's, that, that, that's evil. I remember when I was a kid in L.A. Street preachers. <coughs> You've all seen street preachers, right? Now, I'm not saying this guy was awful. Man. But the way he was preaching to the public, to us kids as we were walking by, 
You're only responsible. Man, that's terrible. That's evil. The reason why is because we didn't understand what he was saying by the Spirit. Amen. If you go out and talk to somebody at the post office or the the the, the uh, thrift store and you tell them because you've got brave, you're going to go to hell unless you know Jesus. Their first response is, dude, who are you? <laughs> Why? It's because they don't understand what the Spirit... Now, that's probably the wrong way to do it, isn't it? Right? Dude, I'm going to grab you by the throat. You all know my, my friend, Matt Henry, that did that. Picked people up by the throat. What do you mean you don't want no Jesus? <laughs> wrong way to do it. But, sometimes... We need to be motivated by the prince of the power of the air against what the Spirit's saying. And what I mean by that is this. The prince of the power of the air is who? Satan. He will try to convince you that what you're hearing isn't true. Why? It's because you don't understand the Spirit that's dwelling in you because you haven't come to the place yet of accepting that. You can watch TV commercials today or whatever else, and you can see how the enemy is just destroying. Yeah. Destroying. How many of you know Kirk Cameron? What that guy is doing is absolutely a miracle. He's standing up for kids and school programs that allow cross-dressers and transgender people and, and people to come in and read books to their kids that will take the kids down to hell to the wrong road. And Kurt says, wait a minute! And he's actually going to the government to look to think right. Isn't it interesting how we're in the last days and God is opening up eyes and doors for the Spirit to move upon things that would have never been allowed to move why is that? Because the Holy Spirit said, okay, we're getting ready. We're getting ready for the return. And we want more and more and more people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ than that enemy does. He doesn't care about you. All he cares about is you don't accept your Savior. That's all he cares about. Because he knows he's done. So evil deeds is something that that we are unmotivated or we're motivated by the prince of the power of the air. His talk is filled with lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, lust of the mind, right? His talk, when he tries to tell you, will bring lust of the things that you see with your eyes or think with your head or walk into. The enemy wants to destroy you and he does that by making you lust after things that will take you away from the Lord. How many of you know if you were lost in pornography, if you are lost in alcoholism, every time you stop by some place and God redeemed that from you, you walk by a pornographic place, the enemy says, look! Or one drink ain't going to hurt you. Especially if you've been addicted. Amen? Yeah. He'll use that addiction against you to keep you from walking in freedom. Because if he can keep you bound up with something, he can continue the evil works in your life. He is a desire you to have flesh and have a natural mind. He gravitates to that so he can expose that in your life. And how many of you know your flesh man should be a lot bigger than your, or your spirit man should be a whole lot bigger than your flesh man? When your flesh man gets tempted, your spirit man says, wait a minute, dude. I don't want none of that. And how does that happen? That's the source of it. Don't fall in that. That doesn't happen by sitting in Sunday service once a week, Wednesday night service once a week. And not even open up your Bible the whole rest of the time. Every day. Every 
Jesus. It's that word that you put. Renew your mind with that word. And the evil that comes upon you will not have a chance. But what you do. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read the first three verses of Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start reading the Bible after the text. Turn here, turn here, turn here. Okay. What part of the Bible is that in? Right? And he told me how to remember um, Galatians and all those. General Electric Power. <laughs> Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Paul. I thought that's good. What about the rest of it? <laughs> Give me some cards for that. Mm -hmm. But then it just takes it just takes use. Are you there? Ephesians chapter two. Verse one. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Why do you think Paul says world? Why did you say were? And you were dead. Okay? You were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you firmly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Paul's telling you, you're not that person no more. You're, you're not that person no more. You were once that person, but you're not that person no more. So as we begin to have faith in that, that's not me no more. I'm not the guy that wants to pull every driver out of his car and choke him to death. That's not me no more. Right? I'm not that person no more. But because of what he's done for me and makes me alive in Christ, I'm not that person no more that wants to see everybody just die. Right? Don't tell me no way you're going to pull someone out of the car. I've been there. <laughs> Me too, bro. Me <laughs> too. Matter of fact, my when when it happened, it happened more than once. One time, I remember my brother and my sister walking down the street with me, and I jump on this car and I pull this guy out and he's going, "What's wrong with him?" And my brother Clay, he said, "He's just angry. He's just mad at the world." So, anyway, so praise God I'm not that person no more. Amen. 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 He said, what's worth? <laughs> <laughs> back, back to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Dead works could be called the initiative. Dead works could be called religious works. How many people do we know that are involved in a religion that is full of dead works? First of all, religion is man's thing. Man can make it religion. Christ didn't didn't want people to be separated by doctrine. Especially selfish doctrine. So dead works, we can, we can just imagine the dead works that goes on. It's a religious thing. They do it as religiosity. I'm supposed to do this, so guess why I'm doing it? Why are you doing that? Well, I'm supposed to. I can say that you know who I'm talking about. Right? I won't get my reward unless I'm religious enough to do this religiosity dumb thing. 
Amen. How many times you remember in scripture that Jesus called out for the deep? Right? Matter of fact, they tried to throw him off a cliff and said, We can't, you ain't ready yet. They turned around and walked through the crowd. You have to understand something, folks. The same spirit that gave Christ the Christ dwells in you. Dwells in you. If God don't want you to be thrown off a cliff, it ain't gonna happen. Amen? We need to quit using religion as a crutch and walk in the fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ that was given to us by God the Father. So much religious stuff is, is being done for the purpose of earning eternal life. It is a legalistic effort to keep the moral and ceremonial laws of God for the purpose of winning God's favor and be saved by grace. Can you imagine being under such bondage that you have to constantly do good works because so-and-so says you have to do good works, otherwise you're not going to make it. Every time you turn around, you're thinking of something else I need to do so I can have that, that smile. It isn't about that. It's about what God's already planned for you, what God's already done for you. It's interesting to me that some of those religiosity things, religious things, are causing people more harm than they are good. Because they're coming to the thought, well, I'll never be good enough. There's nothing that I can't do no more. Or I guess you might as well just find a hole and crawl up in it and just die. Nothing. That's what the enemy wants. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in the Romans 8 and 8. No work by the law, no fleshly work by the law will be justified by grace. In God's sight. No fake work, no good work, no evil deed, no dead work will be, will be looked on by God. Now how about that? No. All God expects from you is to receive and to put things in place. And what happens after that is you can do Dead works. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> How many of you know people that are constantly doing, 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 for the wrong reason? They are told by someone, this is what you have to do. And Jesus says, all you got to do is believe in me. That's it. Believe in me. That's it. You tell you something, folks, that's hard for someone that doesn't believe in anyone. You've had a life where your belief system was taken away from you. It's hard to believe that it's actually that simple. I mean, I don't have to go through this to go through no. <clears> this. <throat> what Jesus say? Amen. Romans chapter ten, verse one. Brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not in accordance with knowledge, for not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. 
Everyone who believes, we need to know about God's righteousness, not works that gets us there. Works will not do what God has already supplied for us to do. Well, I don't want to be a religious fanatic. I do. <laughs> I do. You ever, have you ever heard that saying? I'm no fanatic. How true this is. I'm so heavenly minded, I'm no earthly good. You heard that? <laughs> that can work both ways, can't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's only a good thing sometimes. Paul is a good illustration of repentance and dead work. How many of you remember Paul's story? Saul and Paul. Remember what he did to Saul? Persecuted the church. Who knows how many people he actually killed and baby his mother and father? It doesn't matter. He knows what repentance and dead work is. He clearly stated that he had no confidence in the flesh. Paul, Saul, who went out persecuting the church, has no confidence in the flesh. I don't know about you, but I like to met that guy after he got saved. When, when Jesus knocked him off the on the ground, I, I would have went, man! Lord, you did that to him? Oh, I must be easy. Think about it for a second. And what God did to Paul for the with Paul, for Paul, the whole entire rest of time is unbelievable. He clearly stated that I had no confidence in the flesh. Then he lists the dead works that he needed to repent from. Philippians chapter 3. Turn with me there. Remember, general electric power. Remember, Paul was Oh, man, what did I just see? Who did 
Y'all walked in and don't you know Christ came right there in there. Amen? Call Paul. I'm now going to call you Paul. And you're going to do things like you never thought you were ever going to do. Will you be punished? Yeah. Will you be locked up? Yeah. But you're going to do what I've called you to do in my power and my strength, not yours. It's time for God's people to put away foolish stuff. It's time for God's people to put away foolish works, evil deeds, and dead works that amount to nothing. It's time for God's people to stand up and say, Here I am, Lord. What is it that you want me to do today? I was telling the folks in the office here today, I met with a Lutheran pastor here today. I got this chance to do it. I'm praying with him, talking with him. And went to one of the services on a Friday. His church needs to own it like a gazillion. It was awesome. So he's sitting there, and my daughter prays through the little worship song. He gets up there and begins his message, and I pray to him, Lord, anoint him. Anoint him. Let him feel that presence. And he got up on that stage, and I look at my daughter, she looks at me, and he got anointed. He got anointed. His message was, whoa! That's who we should be in everyday life. Because the truth is what sets people free. Not the good works, not the evil deeds, not the dead works. The truth is what sets people free. Amen? And I believe in my heart that the Spirit's got a, a job, if I can use that word, for everyone that calls upon the name of Christ. Everyone. And I think one of our responsibilities is to try to wake people up from being religious from being religious, thinking that's going to get him somewhere. It won't. Only Jesus' blood can be sure. Amen? Father, thank you for this time we've had together, Lord. I pray, Father, your words will ring true in our hearts as we listen to you and study your word and walk in your presence. I pray, Father, that we no longer be a part of what the evil deeds of this world is but only do what you've called us to do, and that's to love the people. To preach the gospel and share your love with all mankind. To plant a seed wherever a seed needs to be planted. Help us to understand, Lord, that our responsibility is to seek the kingdom of God first. And then go out and preach the gospel. Share the word. So Father, I pray right now, Lord, that any part of this message, I pray, touch someone's heart today. And I pray, God, for the rest of the service today, Lord, we will be glorified. In Jesus' name, I bless you today, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.